Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome all of you from around the world to day three of the exciting World Federation of Youth Clubs Annual Conference. My name is David Evangelista, President and Managing Director of Special Olympics Europe Eurasia and a big fan of the World Federation's work around the world. I'd like to welcome all of you to day three of what I'm sure has been an exciting, uh, information rich and provocative conference stimulating and energizing all of us to recommit ourselves to one of the most urgent social dimensions of our time, empowering youth to achieve their dreams and fulfill their full potential. I think it's important to keep in mind as we continue on this journey, not only in the conference, but in our work, that this work is of an urgent nature. Many years ago, empowering youth may have been, may have been an, uh, a romantic theme. It may have been a nice to have. But as we fast forward to 2022, as the world looks to an ever uncertain COVID pandemic, as the world looks to navigate very turbulent geopolitical times, and as the world looks to heal the divide that has taken root in so many communities around the world, from east to west and from north to south, the World Federation of Youth Clubs stands as one of the most potent antidotes to the conflict that is facing the world today. The World Federation of Youth Clubs is also operating in a sphere that most people are hungry to get into. Most people are hungry and eager to learn from, but most importantly, everyone across the world, whether they know it or not, stand to benefit tremendously from a new generation of youth leaders asking and inviting the world to do better and to be better. My work has taken me around the world, supporting the dreams and aspirations of one of the most, if not the most marginalized population worldwide, individuals with intellectual disabilities. We've all heard the stories. We may have some of those stories ourselves whether it be in school, when we were young, in the community, on the basketball court, on the football pitch, on the ski slopes, in the swimming pool, at a birthday party, we've all seen the discrimination, the marginalization, the bullying, and the sheer social exclusion of a population that stands to benefit all of us so much. And I'm living proof that people with intellectual disabilities have not only inspired my work, but have really transformed my life. In many ways, almost everything I've learned has come from and through the message and example set by the athletes of Special Olympics. And so with that, I'm honored to be your keynote on day three of this important annual conference. When I say that the work of the World Federation of Youth Clubs is urgent, I don't mean that euphemistically nor do I mean to allude to any metaphor. It's now. The youth of today are tomorrow's adults. The children of today are tomorrow's youth. Time is ticking. And your investment and our investment in you is urgent because we have no time to waste. Look at the world around you. Can we think of a more urgent call to action that ensuring that youth are protected, are empowered, are provided the right and the access to education, to healthcare, to safeguarding. What would the world look like if all youth had the chance to come together through groups like Special Olympics and its inclusive platform, Unified Sports? What if youth could come together in the classroom and share experiences safely without stigma, without bullying? What if youth could go into their communities and share their hopes and dreams without being discredited, without being minimized? What would it be if youth could invite the larger community to see the world through their eyes? What would our vision of the global community be if it could be so richly informed by the youth that are entering the doors of your youth clubs from all over the world. I contend that the world would be very similar to that which we envision should the world listen to those with intellectual disabilities. 
the world would be more just, the world would be more inclusive, the world would have less fraction, the world would offer solidarity and unity as real, true, tangible elements of our existence, rather than romantic ideals left for editorials and blogs. The World Federation of Youth Clubs is leading a tremendous effort and Special Olympics is proud to be part of that effort, but it only works if we work through you. Like, like inclusion, like joy, like social justice, it is your leadership, true, daily, tangible, with sweat equity, real leadership, that is opening the doors for youth all around the world to come to a community that understands them, that wants them, that engages them, that values them. These are key, key items on the bucket list of life if you're a young person today. COVID has turned the world upside down, but it's groups like the World Federation of Youth Clubs and you that can right this ship. We have the chance to create a generation fully unified in sport, in education, in health, in social justice. We have, we have the opportunity to empower people who have long, longed for their voice to be heard, to be pronounced, to be articulated, to be celebrated, not as better or worse, but to be valued. And isn't that what we all wish for? To have our place at the table of life, to be valued as a human being in our community, to be given a chance to contribute. All of you across the world have been inspired by youth who, who join and engage in the youth clubs in all of your jurisdictions. There are countless stories of youth that have come to you in despair, but have emerged triumphant because of your leadership, because of your empathy and because of your compassion. These are strong characteristics for leadership and we, at Special Olympics and the World Federation of Youth Clubs are very proud to be promoting those, those types of leadership skills. But in, in many ways, those skills of empathy, those skills of emotional balancing, they come from places where you at least expect them. I remember many years ago, I was in uh, the Machinji district of the Republic of Malawi. I was there on behalf of uh, Special Olympics working with the national government to build more inclusive policies around sport, around education and around health for people with intellectual disabilities. And I was on the field of a, of a rural village. We had just finished a, a practice, a track and field practice uh, with girls and boys of all sorts of abilities, fully inclusive. And many of the attendees of that event migrated to a tent in the distance for refreshments, to escape the sun, which was beating hard that day, I, I, I remember it. But I remember at one point, uh, I turned around and there was a boy uh, all alone. He was one of the athletes of Special Olympics. Um, and he wasn't in the tent. He wasn't invited. I don't, I don't know why that invitation was extended and I don't know why there wasn't this full momentum to ensure that all of the attendees ended where the group convened. But I remember being struck by how unwavered he was. He focused on his dribbling skills with the football on his foot. I remember the mental snapshot of watching him balancing the ball on his foot, the way that many of us could only dream of doing similar to the skills of a Lionel Messi, a Didier Drogba. But what I was most struck by was his strength. You see, I thought in that moment that this was a moment of despair. All were celebrating together, except this one boy. When I looked at him intently from a distance, I recognized that he was full. There was nothing in him that I could see that even remotely came close to providing glimpses to the tent, hoping an invitation would be extended. He had his goal. His goal was to dribble that football as best as he possibly could. 
He was unfazed by the exclusion, so vividly visible. He was unfazed by the lack of invitation. He knew what his goal was, and he was focused on that. And nobody, invitation or not, could take that away from him. Maybe deep down he knew that the world was not for him. Maybe he knew that the world was riddled with obstacles, obstacles that I could not even begin to understand, obstacles he was facing around social inclusion in a rural community in Malawi. But one thing I did find, and one thing I still find, tremendous inspiration from the strength of character from a boy whose name I never knew, but whose experience and whose image has touched me and has left me impressed, truly, literally impressed, since that day in 2012. What I remember of that day and what I remember now is, if we have our eyes fixed on a goal, if we know deep down that what we're doing is just and is right and is good and is valuable, nothing can stop us. And nothing stopped him. Many days I think, how could I possibly get in touch with that boy if I called the school, if I spoke to the mayor of the community? But then I wonder, he's on his own journey as we are ours. And we must take from him the deep understanding that strength is yours to use. It's not something others will give us. And the youth of today need your strength. They need your clarity of vision. They need the empathy that the World Federation of Youth Clubs is so well known for. They need compassionate leadership. But most importantly, and unlike the experience that I saw, they need to know that they're invited. Extend the invitation to youth in your community, even those on the margins. Consider youth with intellectual disabilities as some of the teachers that youth clubs could be benefiting from. Consider refugees and migrants. Consider the themes of gender equity as themes that everyone should be, should be rallying around. I think of my friend in Malawi as an example of, of, the, of the best I can be. And while I'm not sure I'll ever be as strong as him, as the model of Special Olympics says, let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. We all need to be brave as we face this world around us, just as he was, just as he was brave to practice his skills despite all the exclusion around him. We have a lot to celebrate from his example. We also have a lot to learn. Extend the invitation, choose to include. The future is incredibly bright with the World Federation of Youth Clubs. But that brightness and that light shines most through your leadership at the national level and at the club level. From Kansas to Kampala and from Massachusetts to Malawi, we need the World Federation of Youth Clubs and you now more than ever. You see, today's youth will be tomorrow's ministers, industry leaders, professors, academics. And what will they say about their youth experience? What will they tell others about how they view the world? We, ladies and gentlemen, or dare I say, we through you, have the chance to architect a new beginning through the youth of today to be tomorrow's leaders. Special Olympics is honored to be a part of this effort. And I am truly honored to serve as your keynote for day three of this exciting conference. From all of us, I not only wish you safety, but I wish you luck and I thank you for your leadership and for believing in the power of today's youth to build all of tomorrow's future. From Spain, muchísimas gracias. Thank you.